angels sang, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might to be our God for ever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The Lord be with you. Let us prepare our hearts for the divine mysteries. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Lord, have mercy upon us and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the Most High, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Who is like you, O God? You are the source of healing and salvation. You have conquered the powers of evil. You walk with your people throughout this earthly pilgrimage. As we give thanks for Michael, for archangels, angels, and all heavenly powers, let us know that in them you stand by us and encourage us until that day when we shall see you face to face. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. first reading <clears throat> this morning comes from the book of Revelation of John, chapter 12, beginning at the seventh verse. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not cling to life, even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath because he knows that his time is short. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now read a portion of Psalm 103. 
and the congregation responds is, Give your angels charge over us, O God. Give your angels charge over us, O God. Beginning at verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, all you angels, you that excel in strength, you that fulfill his word, and obey the voice of his commandment. Give, Give your, your angels charge over us, O God. God. Praise the Lord, all you hosts, his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works in all places of dominion. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Give your angels charge over us, O God. Merciful Lord, we come from dust and return to dust. Show us the face of our Redeemer, that in our frailty we may bless your name and praise you all your days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 1, beginning at the fifth verse. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, He makes his angels wines, and his servants flames of fire. But your son, he says... O throne, O God, is forever and ever. And righteousness, scepter, and the scepter of your kingdom, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are your work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing, like a cloak, you will roll them up. And like clothing they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will never end. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Not all angels, spirits, in divine service, sent to the serve of the sake of those who are inherit, of those are to inherit salvation. Hear the word of the Lord. Stand for our gradual hymn, Stars of the Morning.
Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, chapter 1, beginning at the 47th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I speak to your name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please have a seat. Who here has ever been duped? No? Oh, some of you are lucky. For the, oh, there we go. Someone's going to be honest. Those who have known it know it is not a very good feeling. And those who haven't might not even know they probably have been. Let me give you an example. If I was to ask you what a cherub or cherubim is and looks like, what would you say? What was that, Frida? Oh, that's a good answer. I like that one. Frida said a chubby angel. Because most of the people I asked this week gave the same answer as Frida. They usually said something along the lines of, Uh, usually a plump little child with wings, right? And then usually followed uh, with having something to do with St. Valentine's Day, with a little, you know, bow and arrow, making people fall in love. But is that the case for what the cherub actually looks like? Let me read to you from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. I looked... And there were four wheels beside the cherubim, one beside each cherub. Now, this is going to talk about what thrones are. And the appearance of the wheels was like a beaming, gleaming beryl. And as for their appearance, the four looked alike, something like a wheel within a wheel. When they moved, they moved in any of the four directions, without veering as they moved. But in whatever direction the front wheel faced, the others followed without veering as they moved. Their entire bodies, backs, hands and wings were covered with eyes and all around, as were the wheels of the four of them. As for the wheels, they called in my hearing the wheel work. Each one had four faces. The first face was of that of a cherub. The second face was that of a human. The third, that of a lion and the fourth, that of an eagle. Now, I must admit, this reading from Ezekiel sounds nothing like the cherub that people described to me during the week, or what Frida said before. And when I asked, you know, when I asked what a cherubim, or which is a multiple of cherub, was, because I think they have been duped by Hellenistic, and secular ideas that have bled into Christianity that are far more, A, assumed more uh, artistically pleasing, and B, I would say, easier to paint and draw than the real description. And over time, this image of the small, plump child with a bow and arrow and wings has even become, within those who go to church, the understanding of what they look like. Today we are celebrating the feast of St. Michael, uh, the Archangel, and all angels, traditionally called Michaelmas, a day set aside by the church to celebrate all things angels. 
Of angels, there are nine different types, but the main ones are the before-mentioned cherubim and also seraphim or seraph. From the book of Isaiah and Revelation and Genesis had uh, the uh, cherubim in before. Uh, these are the, the seraphim are the fiery ones who have faces, hands and feet, but they also have six wings and use four of them to cover themselves in the presence of God, a sign of humility. They ent eternally worship God, flying around him, crying out, holy, holy, holy. We also have the angels and archangels. These are the ones often people think about in uh, usually a humanly form, plus the addition of wings. But, unfortunately, much like the cherubim and their misunderstanding, these are never mentioned with wings. In fact, we are told in the scriptures that cherubim and, and seraphim have wings, but not angels and archangels. Now, the angels and archangels serve as the messengers of God, and messenger is what angel means in Greek. And of those, plus the others to get us up to nine, there are also thrones, dominions, virtues, powers, and principalities. These nine types of angels form what is called part of the host of heaven, an angel hierarchy of sorts. It's also called the divine council, and that is why God in the Old Testament has a very particular name. Have you ever wondered why in the Old Testament this name is used 300 times, the term Lord of Hosts? Have you ever wondered why it calls God in the Old Testament Lord of Hosts? Right, he's at the top, the very pinnacle. And that's right, is that he's the Lord of hosts because he is the Lord of the hosts of heaven, which is the angels. And that term is used 300 times in the Old Testament, uh, especially in the prophets, uh, but is also in the New Testament showing the importance of that as well. But as with many things in the world, people take it at times too far. Uh, like how some almost have a fanatical worship of the saints. Some have developed an almost fanatical worship of the host of heaven, the divine uh, council, the angels and archangels. If you want evidence of this, you just have to go somewhere like at Warner's Bay. There's an angel store where you can get angel tarot cards. Uh, Doreen Virtue, who is a woman in the States, made most of her income in her earlier life from writing and making stuff on angels and she later became a Christian and repented of all that. She tried to sadly pull it off the shelves but the publisher wouldn't let her and kept publishing it so now she writes things against her earlier self uh, but it shows that there are people in our wider community that worship angels like gods. But the thing is the host of heaven, the saints, they are not gods. They want to do his work in the world uh, from, you know, if you look at the scriptures from Genesis, when the three angels visit Abraham in Genesis 18. Uh, another example of angels doing the work of God is when they rolled away the stone from the tomb in Matthew 28, or opened the gates of prison for Peter in Acts 5. Our scriptures are full of stories of angels engaging with humanity on God's behalf. Within the New Testament, we see angels such as Michael and Gabriel. And Michael, who is the center person for our feast today, has an important meaning to his name because no name in the Bible comes without meaning. It's always, uh, we might just say Michael, but the original Hebrew or Greek comes with loaded meaning. Does anyone know what Michael means? It was in our opening collect. Let me give you a hand. Michael translates as, uh, as who is like God, which I think is important because it draws us back to that point before that angels like saints do not desire or wish to be worshipped, rather their desire is for us to worship the one who created everything. They too, like the saints, desire for us to be pointed back to God, back 
through Jesus. He is the anchor that holds us. We too, I think, in many ways, need to be like the angels. And what I mean by that is that they live to serve God. They live to serve Jesus. Such an example is like when they ministered to him in Matthew 4, after the devil had tempted him. They are always existing for one purpose, and that is to support the work of God and point people back to him. We too need to be active in our ministry and work in the world. The name Seraphim, once again, a name that has meaning, translates as the fiery ones, because they burn with the love they have for God. We too need to be a community, a people, a church that burns with the love of God in our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can be on His side and serve Him as our King so that we can say, Saviour, I am yours. Have you ever been envious or jealous of someone else or their life? Most people at some point usually experience some form of envy or jealousy of another. There is an ancient Jewish saying that essentially says that all the angels, the hosts of heaven, and Christianity then applies that to Michael, the archangel as well, is jealous of you and me. But why is that? Why would divine beings be jealous of, you know, old Zeb or... Talus or Bill or Frida, why would they be jealous or envious of that? It is said because, A, we are able to be children of God. Powerful in itself. B, God descended to become a human. The ultimate being of the universe squeezed himself into flesh and bone to experience our pain and suffering, then go to the cross for us, the ultimate outpouring of love. And C, is that we are able to participate in the Eucharist, which is the closest communion one can have with God. We consume the body and blood of Christ and enter into relationship with Him. And yet the angels in their state of envy still live and exist to point us to God. Imagine being in the hardest moment of your life. Your friends have left you. You feel rejected and abandoned for something else. But in that moment, you still choose to point others to God to Jesus, rather than asking for their sympathy and generosity. Because you know that God, Jesus, is the only thing that truly matters. That's a hard call. And I think I envy the angels to be able to still do that. So my prayer this week is that we may be able to look at our faith with new eyes. Not with a sense of what the world or secularism presents as our faith, but rather with the view of the truth. What is actually given to us by God. Looking to see what the Bible really says about things like angels, about faith, about us so that we can be the children of God Christ calls us to be, a people that the angels are envious of because we have true and meaningful relationship with God, being able to proudly say, Saviour, I am yours. Amen. Let us stand and affirm the faith of the Church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please sit or kneel as able as we pray for the world and for the church. With the whole company of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Strong in the power of God, may the church never fail in the fight against evil. Strengthen her ministers to be faithful guides and guardians of those entrusted to them in this world. Keep the church faithful when troubles come. Give your people courage to ask not for freedom from suffering, but for the strength to endure. Help us to care for others and to comfort their distress by the grace that reveals the mystery of love through suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bring peace to the conflicts in the world. Where nations are at war and anger rules in many human lives. Teach those who rule over others to know and follow the unseen love which is all around them. Have pity on the troubles of the world through war and violence, through human sin and natural disasters. Give to all men and women true compassion for suffering and the will to work for its relief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our personal lives, let us trust in the heavenly protection which does not leave us to face our problems alone. Be near to all in our community who are especially vulnerable and uphold, the, uphold those who care for them. Grant that in our love for those near to us, we shall never forget the distress of others. Help us to use for good the gifts that you have given. Come with your healing power to any in this community who are in particular need at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the victims of war and violence, for the homeless and refugees, for families separated by conflict. Grant comfort and courage to all who are near to death and those who watch with them. We pray for all who are afflicted. Heal the sick in body or mind, and those who are weary with long illness. Comfort those who are sorrowful. When we do not know how to help others, accept our silent care for them and our trust in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the departed, especially those who have died in war, and for those who dying has been hard and full of suffering. May Saint Michael and all the angels lead them into the life that will not end. With Mary, Mother of our Lord, Saint Joseph, her spouse, and all the saints, sharing in the life which all tears are wiped away, and there is no more suffering or pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, the angels sing by day and night around your throne. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. With Michael, Prince of the Angels, who contends by our side. With Gabriel, your herald, who brings glad tidings. With Raphael, the protector, who ministers your healing. And with the whole company of heaven, 
We worship you, we give you glory, we sing your praise and exalt you forever. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ said to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have the eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said, The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Let us then run our race, laying aside every weight, and bring our sins to the Lord in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We share God's peace together with those who are here and those who join us online. Brothers and sisters, let me remind you that St. John wrote, How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help. Our offertory hymn is Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. Souls in endless rest. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this gift of our labour. Accept and use this offering for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. And it's been a contract coming, so here we go, Melissa. Thank you, thank you, Lord God. As your angels minister before you, O God, so we have prepared this table to celebrate your glory. Let the gift imparted here bring us to share that glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always here and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, you reveal your wise purpose for the salvation of the human race by assigning to the angels the ministry of your steadfast love while they contemplate your splendour and glory, standing before you to sing your praise. They also keep a faithful vigil for us along the way that leads to life and guide us towards the kingdom of your light. In joyful gladness we unite our voice with theirs and sing the ageless hymn of your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Hear us, merciful Lord, through Christ, accept our sacrifice of praise, and by the power of your word and Holy Spirit, sanctify this bread and wine that we who share in this holy sacrament may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. Who, when his hour had come on the night before he went up to the cross to make a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all his one sacrifice of himself, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim thy death, O Lord, and profess thy resurrection until thou come again. Therefore, in obedience to his command, we commemorate and celebrate the saving, his saving passion and death, his mighty resurrection and ascension into heaven, and we eagerly await his coming again in glory. We thank you that by your grace alone you have accepted us in Christ, and here we offer you a spiritual sacrifice, holy and acceptable in your sight. Through Christ receive this our duty and service, and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may by your Holy Spirit be one body in Christ, and serve you in unity and peace. Gracious God, renew the life of your church. Remember Peter, our bishop, and all ministers who break and share the living bread among us. Remember those broken in body or spirit. 
Give them peace in the glorious wounds by which we have been healed. In your grace and mercy, bring us to the joy of your eternal kingdom with all the company of the redeemed. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, gracious Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ, in remembrance that he died for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Restored by the bread of heaven, we ask you, Lord, that in the strength of this food, we may walk in the way of salvation under the faithful care of your angels. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ. wonderful to see you all. Two quick notices. First is um, we're going to do a trivia night 29th or 28th of October. We're going to do it down at the club. Uh, should be a great time. Tables of eight. Invite all your friends. There'll be lots of prizes, especially you know, we might have some wine, but we'll get some tea or coffee for tea. If you can, PJ. I think we'll exchange a bowl of Jack Daniels for like a case of tea. I think that's a good trade. <laughs> Um, so that's on the 28th of October. Please invite your friends. Um, maybe we could get a group from maybe Lymington Village and a few other bits and pieces. You never know. Be good yeah, fun. Oh, we'll get you a bus. We'll bus you all up. Otherwise, uh, that should be good fun. 28th of October. Uh, the club's going to give us a whole heap of prizes to give away as well. But if you want to donate some prizes, please let me know. Second is that for uh, our fate, I, whilst I was visiting the club, I had a chit-chat with them. And they have agreed to sponsor the costs of having a petting zoo and pony rides here on our fate day. So thank you again to Katara Bowling Club. It's a very generous gift because they're going to be here for the full five hours uh, for kids and families. You never know if I'm lucky, I might even get a pony ride, the poor pony. <laughs> or pet, pet a lamb or something like that. Should be good fun. I think they bring a calf as well if you're lucky, so you never know. But should be a good day, and that's on the 12th of November um, as well. So uh, keep that in mind. And once again, if you want to help out with the fate or the fair, go see me, Cat or PJ. We've got a few names, but the more hands make lighter work. <laughs> so if you want to give a hand, please uh, just con see them or myself. Otherwise, are there any birthdays, anniversaries, anything like that? 50 years. Of? Ordination. Marriage. Oh, marriage. Poor thing. You do, Stephen. Would you like a blessing? Thank you. All right, let's pray. Loving Lord, we thank you for the ministry of Father Stephen among us and what he does in your church. We pray for another year that he may travel with you in marriage uh, with his wife and pray that you may be always present in their home, bringing your comfort, your love and your healing. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon him and his wife this day and forevermore. Amen. Would you please stand for the blessing? God keep you in the fellowship of his saints. Christ protect you by the ministry of the angels. The Spirit make you holy in God's service. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And our final hymn, Sing of the Lord's Goodness. Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever.